right, I'm super hyped to talk to you guys about this feature because um, I think pets are something that uh, pretty much everyone that plays World of Warcraft probably has a pet in some way, shape, or form. Um, I don't think not necessarily everyone is a collector and has all the achievements, but it's definitely something that I think everyone knows what it is, and it's a feature we definitely felt like we could expand upon and offer some new gameplay. Whoa. There we go. <laughs> so what exactly are we doing here? Um, essentially, you're going to be able to collect, you're going to level, and you're going to fight with your pets. Um, <laughs> So we're going to go through all of these in a little bit more detail, but first some key elements. First of all, it's accessible to everyone. We didn't want it to be a feature that was locked to the max level that only a few people would get access to. We wanted it something to be that everyone could do. Um, so you'll be able to start this at a really low level and start collecting pets, leveling them up, and building your team. Another thing is it's going to work with almost every pet in the game right now, as well as a ton of new pets that we're going to be adding for the system for you to collect. Um, so for all you people already out there that already have, say, say you've got 100 pets, you know, most likely almost all of those pets are going to work with the system right when you get it. Now granted, you're going to have to level them on your own, but they'll still be able to work with the system. It's also going to be a lot of customization, um, things like being able to name your pets, things like being able to have different <laughs> ones, um, giving them individual abilities, we'll get into that more in a little bit. So as far as collection goes, how does that work? Like I said, it's going to work with your existing pets. So a lot of people are going to start the system and already have a pet to start with and get it going. There's another type of pet you're going to be able to get that we're introducing new for Mist of Pandaria. And this is going to be called a wild pet. And the way wild pets work is you're going to find them out in the world. Um, essentially, when you find them, you're going to be able to engage in battle with them and fight with them using a pet that you already have. And then you're going to be able to get that pet and add him to your collection. <laughs> Now what's cool about these wild pets is that they have random varying stats. So you're not necessarily going to just go out and be able to get all the wild pets you want, you know, within that first week because they're going to have varying stats. So you might want a pet that's really good at, say, tanking or a pet that maybe has like a CC ability. So you're going to keep wanting to collect these pets until you find that one that has the right set of stats. Then you can start leveling it up. The other thing about the wild pets that's pretty cool is that they have unique spawning abilities. So, for example, certain wild pets you might only find during a certain season, like winter. Uh, certain pets you might only find when it's raining, for example. Um, certain pets might only spawn during the day or the night. So there could be a pet that only shows up during the spring while it's raining in Elwynn Forest at night. Now, they're not all going to be like that, obviously, but we definitely want to mix it up so that people have a lot of pets to collect over a long period of time. We don't want you to just go out right away and get all of them. We want it to be a system that lasts. Now, how are you going to find these pets? We're going to change the pet interface we have now and introduce something called the pet journal. Um, what the pet journal is going to do is let you manage all your existing pets you have as well as the teams and the battling and everything that goes along with the new system. We've got a, a few UI shots that we'll show you that give you a little bit more of a rundown about how the journal works. Um, the other thing along with this is that most pets are going to become tradable. So what this means is you're going to be able to, say, get the Wuppeltinger from an event, like the Brewfest event, and then be able to take it and, say, level it up to a certain level, maybe teach it some abilities. Then you can go and take that pet and throw it on the auction house and someone else could get it. And based on the amount of time and work you put into it, obviously it's going to sell for what people think that's worth. So we really wanted the system to feel like something that you could trade pets, not only in the auction house, but with your buddies and, and you know, your friends, your guildies, other players. Uh, this is a huge one. Um, we're really working hard to have this, is to have account-wide pets. Meaning that obviously if you have a set of pets on one character, you log in another character, you know, you'd be able to use those same pets. If you got a pet up to level 14, you log in another character, that pet's still level 14 and you have it. You don't have to do it again multiple times for all the pets. So here's a look at the pet journal. Um, the, like, just like the, the mock-ups uh, Tom showed you earlier, these are all mock-ups of how we think the UI would work from our UI team. So over there on the left, you've got your list of, list of pets. You can search and filter through to find the ones you want. And then over on the right, you can see that pet stats. And then at the bottom, you can see the abilities that they've unlocked. We're looking at unlocking something like six abilities over 25 levels. Um, and then on the right, there's an interesting spot called location. And if you click that, 
you're actually going to be able to find out where can you get this pet in the world. So instead of having to alt tab out of the game, go to the web and go to a database site and try to find out, well, where can I find this guy? Where does he spawn? Where do I get him? Uh, similar to what we did with the dungeon journal, where you could see all the items and find out what bosses drop them, you're going to be able to find out where to get all your pets straight out of the journal from within the game. So now you've collected some pets, you've got, a, you've got a good amount of them, you're managing them, now you've got to level them. How do you do this? Um, well, you fight with other pets. Um, and when you win battles, you earn experience, and experience levels your pet. As you level, you're going to learn new abilities that you can then use in battle. Now, you're also going to have slots to place these abilities in. Every pet can use three abilities in battle at one time. So a pet's going to learn six, and you get to choose any three of those and place them on your pet to use in the battle. And I've got a mock-up so you guys can see how this looks, too. Every time you level, you're going to earn stats as well. So the higher level your pet, obviously, it's going to be stronger as it's growing. Now, you're going to be able to level multiple pets because you're going to want to build a team. You don't want to just take one pet and get them all the way up. You might want to take a couple pets and level them all up together so that you can have a team of pets that are at similar level. So here's a look at the, the team interface. So this is also within the journal, it's just a different tab. And so here we've got a team. This guy has two pets on his team, and you can see those three slots for abilities where he's dragged an ability in. And those are the abilities that when this pet goes into battle, that's what shows up on the bar, and you can press that ability to use it. So over on the left, is, these are the pets and their level, and then on the right, you just drag them over, and that's how you would build a team. Now, how does the fighting work, right? So now you've, you've got a pet, you've leveled them up, you want to actually fight against someone and use all this stuff that you've been earning. So you're going to be able to fight both in PvE in the world against the wild pets, but you're also going to be able to fight friends and possibly enemies uh, using the PvP battle as well. One thing that's different, it's going to be turn-based. So we wanted to slow things down a little bit from wild combat. Wild combat's super fast. You know, people can sometimes die in like 15, 20 seconds right away. So we wanted to introduce something that felt a little different, could slow it down, and it's something that's a little bit more of a thinking game. So mechanics-wise, you know, it's not going to be something that's going to move so quickly, you're not necessarily going to miss it or know what happened. Um, so we wanted to give something that felt a little bit different. So it could be, you know, just people that might want to focus on that could have a different piece of content to focus on. Kind of like we were saying earlier, that we want content for everyone. We want to have a feature that a lot of different people could play, not just something that's for a small segment of the population. So you're going to fight with a team of three, um, and we're going to allow you to queue. Just like we have dungeon queuing, you know, you'd be able to queue up and go against another group, and we'd look at the level of their pets so we could make sure that we put you against other pets that were within the same range. So hopefully you'd have a fight that feels some, something about the level that you could handle. So here's a look of what it would look like. This is just a mock-up. So one thing that's important is we want to keep the WoW characters in the scenes for the fights, because they're important. They're the ones that are collecting the pets. They're the masters of the whole system. So and we want to have the WoW characters actually be a part of it. When your pet does an ability, you know, your, your guy might do an emote. He might do something that makes sense going along with that ability that you used. You can see the, the bar at the bottom has the abilities you'd be casting, and then you can see your other pets kind of underneath the portraits there. This is just a mock-up, like we said, but it's, you know, something we could envision it looking like. So customization, like I said earlier, um, naming your pets is a big thing. So you could have a pet that you've had for a really long time, and you'd finally be able to give them a name, and then see that name in battle. We're also talking about having items. So imagine the idea that you could have an item that you could, we'd have an item slot on the pet. You can equip an item. Maybe you could even put gems in that item so you could modify the stats on the pet as well. So we could pull in some of the profession systems. You're going to be able to do individual builds like we were showing you earlier with abilities. So you can take a, a certain pet and change his abilities and change his slots out so that your team will feel different from other teams around you. And finally, we've kind of got this concept of masters. So you're going to be able, we wanted to really have people that are into the system feel like they could travel around the world and have a reason to go to other places. So you're going to be able to go to, like, say, uh, say you're going to go to Tenaris and there's a goblin there that's, that's, really, that's really great with training mechanical pets. 
So you'd be able to go there and fight him, and if you can beat him, he'll grant you what we're calling a master ability. And then you could use that ability on any of your pets to fight in battle. So here's a look to how this could work. So this guy's got three abilities at the top right now, and then he's chosen a master, and then over on the right, we see the map. And that shows you where you can go to fight that master and the ability that you could get. So it just adds a little bit more depth and customization into the system as a whole.